of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with, with your spirit. We come knowing the mercy, the love, the compassion, the tenderness of our God. But we come also knowing our sin sickness, our need for repentance, our need to live as God's people. So we pray. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Kyrie By your help we beseech you, Lord God. May we walk eagerly in that same charity with which out of love for the world your Son handed himself over to death through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the prophet Ezekiel. The Lord says this, I am now going to open your graves. I mean to raise you from your graves, my people, and lead you back to the soil of Israel. And you will know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and raise you from your graves, my people. And I shall put my spirit in you, and you will live. And I shall resettle you on your own soil. And you will know that I, the Lord, have said and done this. It is the Lord who speaks. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord, Lord, hear my voice. 
Oh, let your ears be attentive to the voice of my pleading. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. If you, Lord, should mark our guilt, Lord, who would survive? But with you is found forgiveness. For this we revere you. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. My soul is waiting for the Lord. I count on his word. My soul is longing for the Lord more than watchmen for daybreak. Let the watchmen count on daybreak and Israel on the Lord. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. Because with the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. Israel indeed he will redeem from all its iniquity. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. People who are interested only in unspiritual things can never be pleasing to God. Your interests, however, are not in the unspiritual, but in the spiritual, since the Spirit of God has made his home in you. In fact, Unless you possessed the Spirit of Christ, you would not belong to him. Though your body may be dead, it is because of sin. But if Christ is in you, then your spirit is life itself, because you have been justified. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, then he who raised Jesus from the dead will give life to your own mortal bodies through his spirit living in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. There was a man named Lazarus who lived in the village of Bethany with his two sisters, Mary and Martha, and he was ill. It was the same Mary, the sister of the sick man Lazarus, who anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair. The sisters sent this message to Jesus. Lord, the man you love is ill. On receiving this message, Jesus said, 
this sickness will end not in death, but in God's glory, and through it, the Son of God will be glorified. Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. Yet, when he heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed where he was for two more days before saying to the disciples, let us go to Judea. The disciples said, Rabbi, it is not long since the Jews wanted to stone you. Are you going back again? Jesus replied, are there not 12 hours in the day? A man can walk in the daytime without stumbling because he has the light of this world to see by. But if he walks at night, he stumbles because there is no light to guide him. He said that and then added, our friend Lazarus is resting. I am going to wake him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he is able to rest, he is sure to get better. The phrase Jesus used referred to the death of Lazarus, but they thought that by rest he meant sleep. So Jesus put it plainly, Lazarus is dead, and for your sake I am glad I was not there, because now you will believe. But let us go to him. Then Thomas, known as the twin, said to the other disciples, Let us go to and die with him. On arriving, Jesus found that Lazarus had been in the tomb for four days already. Bethany is only about two miles from Jerusalem, and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to sympathize with them over their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus had come, she went to meet him. Mary remained sitting in the house. Martha said to Jesus, If you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now, whatever you ask God, he will grant you. Your brother, said Jesus to her, will rise again. Martha said, I know he will rise again at the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. If anyone believes in me, even though he dies, he will live. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she said. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who was to come into the world. When she had said this, she went and called her sister Mary, saying in a low voice, The Master is here and wants to see you. Hearing this, Mary got up quickly and went to him. Jesus had not yet come into the village. He was still at the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews, who were in the house, sympathizing with Mary, saw her get up so quickly and go out, they followed her, thinking that she was going to the tomb to weep there. Mary went to Jesus, and as soon as she saw him, she threw herself at his feet, saying, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. At the sight of her tears and those of the Jews who had followed her, Jesus said in great distress, with a sigh that came straight from the heart, Where have you put him? They said, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. And the Jews said, See how much he loved him? But there were some who remarked, He opened the eyes of the blind man. Could he not have prevented this man's death? Still sighing, Jesus reached the tomb. It was a cave with a stone to close the opening. Jesus said, take the stone away. Martha said to him, Lord, by now he will smell. This is the fourth day. Jesus replied, have I not told you that if you believe you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, 
I thank you for hearing my prayer. I knew indeed that you always hear me, but I speak for the sake of all these who stand round me, so that they may believe it was you who sent me. When he had said this, he cried in a loud voice, Lazarus, here, come out. The dead man came out, his feet and hands bound with hands, bands of stuff and a cloth round his face. Jesus said to them, unbind him, let him go free. Many of the Jews who had come to visit Mary had seen what he did and believed in him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Our reading today is another very, very big text. Huge, layered with meaning in every direction. Every line, every verse has, has more symbolic meaning than you could ever believe. But today we can't take all. Otherwise we'll be here for a very long time. So what I want to pull out of the text is what I consider its core, its kernel. I want you to hear a line in this text first. This sickness will not end in death. Say it with me. This sickness will not end in death. Now, that is the most remarkable line for us to be reading on this day as we're facing the pandemic throughout the world and here in Trinidad and Tobago. On the eve of moving into the next stage as we go into a full lockdown of, of our country. In, in, in the panic that people are experiencing, in, in all the different ways in which people are, are now fearful, anxious, cabin fever has already set in for the children who have been home now a couple of weeks and the parents who have had to be home with them. And now we have a further lockdown again because this sickness seems to be so all pervasive, so powerful. It seems to be so invincible. It, 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 takes over a country and it does what it wants with the country and yet we have to believe what the word teaches us the sickness will not end in death the sickness will not end in death that will not be the final end as we listen to this text of Martha Mary Lazarus these are the closest family of Jesus when he comes into Jerusalem. He, he comes up the, the Mount of Olives. He goes into the Garden of Gethsemane. He passes a, a, along into Bethany. It's, it's a very short distance from Jerusalem to Bethany. And whenever he's in Jerusalem, that's where he, he goes and that's where he stays. Th this is a family that he's very close to. And yet, when he got the message that your friend Lazarus is, is, is ill, come. Jesus does the strangest thing ever. He waits two days. And, and the disciples are confused. But, but I thought he's your good friend. Yeah, it's because I love him are waiting. Now you figure that logic out. Because I love him, that's why I'm waiting. I'm not rushing to help him. Because I love him, I am waiting. Now, now that is a, a, a piece of illogic that, that is... Is, will boggle your mind for weeks because the love of God is displayed in this text in a way that is totally contrary to how we human beings believe and think and, and, and therefore how we think God should be acting if he really loves us he should spare us if he really loves us, he should not allow this to reach to this stage if he really loves us, he should have done something to wipe this out already but Jesus says, because I love him, I'm waiting two days. Because I love him. Now, that is a, a, a way of understanding that you could only understand if you understand the man born blind. Because again, in that text, it says that who, who sinned? The man or his mother or his father? Jesus said, neither of them. He was born this way that the glory of God may be revealed. 
And so too in this case with Lazarus, so too in this case with COVID-19. This is happening so that the glory of God will be revealed. That's why it's happening. That the glory of God will be revealed. How? Well, look at the text and the emotions in the text. Incredible human emotions. Incredible. Incredible. The, the disciples are confounded. How come he's not going back? Then there's fear. I thought you said the Jews were out to get you the last time you were there in Jerusalem, not too long ago. How come you're going back? Then there's courage. Thomas, who we call doubting Thomas. Thomas comes out and says, let us go to Jerusalem with him. Let's die with him. Then there is grief. And, and, and when he reaches to Bethany, everyone is in deep, deep grief. And then there's grief. The shortest line in the whole of the scripture, Jesus wept. Jesus wept. And the people said, see, he, he weeps for his friend. Could he not treat him, if he cured the man who was born blind, why couldn't he have cured this one? And Jesus wept. And Jesus continues to weep. As a human being, he wept for his friend. As man, he weeps for you, and he weeps for me. As man, he feels the whole range of human emotions, and he's taken that up into heaven. And, and that's symbolized in the sacred heart of Jesus. That every good Catholic at one time had, as soon as you opened the door of the house, you saw the sacred heart of Jesus. It reminds us that God's heart is broken. It's broken for you and for me, because we have not lived all that God has called us to live. This text moves forward again. It moves forward again. It moves from the desolation and the weeping of Jesus to an action of God. And it is in this action of God that something starts to happen now. And the whole human emotion changes. So if we look again at the faith perspective on this text, the disciples still don't understand who Jesus is. They still don't get it. When, when we meet Martha, who is there still at prayer, totally contrary to how we always see Martha, a busy body of practicalities. And, 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 and there, Martha is, is, is filled with grief and, and, and has this incredible dialogue with, with Jesus when, when he says, if you had only been here, my brother would not have died. And Jesus says, but your brother, Martha, is going to rise again. I know he will rise again at the resurrection of the dead. And, and, and here we have the, the pivotal piece of our story. Who is Jesus Christ? Who is he? Who is he? And here we see Jesus says, Martha, I am. And he invokes the name by which God revealed himself to Moses. I am the resurrection, and the life. He who believes in me will never die. I am the resurrection and the life. I, I, do you believe this? That Jesus is the resurrection and the life. And, and in saying this, Jesus points to something that is very powerful. The whole community is worried about a man who had died. Jesus is worried about life after the grave. Poor Lazarus, and, and I sympathize with the guy. He dies twice because he dies the first time and Jesus brings him back to life only for him to die again. Poor Lazarus, dying once is traumatic enough. Dying twice? But he dies twice so that the glory of God may be revealed. And, and in this first death, we have twice in our text, on his entry into Bethany, and then Martha or Mary says it. But he's in this grave for four days. And in the Jewish law, you could not recognize a person after four days because they had decomposed. And so you would never open a tomb after four days. It was against the law, the tradition, the customs, everything. And it says twice emphasizing the fact that what is going to happen here is, is, is going beyond anything. If it was as a, the, the boy 
who was going on to burial, who had just died with the widow, and Jesus raised him. He, he's still intact, but after four days, he is decomposing, is what the text is saying. And what about Mary? Mary is the one praying at home. She's a contemplative, total reversal of rules. And, and, and she's there quiet in the room praying, everyone surrounding her praying. And, and when she gets the word, she goes out looking for Jesus. And she and Jesus have this dialogue. The line in the text that I love the most is when he reaches to the tomb and he says, roll the stone. So there is a divine action, a command, but there must be a human response. Because if nobody rolled the stone, then the next action doesn't take place. What is the rolling of the stone? How do we roll the stone? How do we open back the grave? How do we open back that which was death? You know, we sometimes take a, a great privilege in, in, in our graves. Huh? All, all the graves where the dead bodies are buried. My mother hurt me when I was this age, and, and because of that, this is why I am this way now. And this one did me that, and because of that, that's how I am this way now. And this one did this, and that's why I am this way now. We, we all have a pile of graves that we use as trophies and monuments to explain to other people why we cannot grow up, why we cannot be different, and why we cannot become holy, and why we cannot become saints. Because at five years old, at seven, at 10, at 12, at nine, at 14, at 25, at 45, these things happened that were death to me, and therefore, I can't grow past that. Open the grave. Open the grave and allow Jesus Christ in. Open the grave. And, and, and we, we make such monuments out of our graves. In our history, we've made such a monument out of our graves. All the many different things that were done to us, that was, they were terrible. They were bad. They, they, they were ridiculous. They, they, they caused incredible death for us in our psyche, in our mind. Open the graves. Let Jesus Christ in. And when the stone is rolled, when the grave is open, Jesus just simply says, Lazarus, come forth. Come out. Come out. In the book of Ezekiel, our first reading, when, Jesus, when, when the prophet says that God means to open the graves of his people and bring them out and bring them forth, it's the same language that, that he used for the exodus, bringing the people out of Egypt and into the promised land. And it's the same language he's using today for you and for me to remind us that this sickness will not end in death, but in the glory of God being revealed. So move that stone. Move it. Open that grave. And today, as we celebrate Eucharist together, let us hear the word of Jesus Christ. Come forth. Come forth. Come out of your graves. Come out of the death that we've made such a show over. Come out of the death that has been so engaging for us that we've been hiding behind as an excuse of why we cannot become holy people. Come out of the death that we've been living in this country, working at manic pace and, and, and barely loving each other and barely relating to each other, come out of the death that we have been creating in this country where we have taken freedom and moved it to license and, and made it into a God so that no one can touch our freedom, so that our freedom is impinging on everybody else and no one can talk to it. Come out of the grave. Come out of the grave. Because God means to do a renewal in this people in your life and in my life. But first we must open the grave. We must recognize it as a grave. We must open it and we must allow Jesus Christ in. But the sickness will not end in death because God is the resurrection and the life. Jesus is the resurrection and the life. And having brought Lazarus forth out of the grave, then he says something that is most profound. Unbind him. Unbind him. Not only must we be raised from the dead, we must be unbound. And it takes the whole community to unbind us. The whole community starts the unbinding process. 
And, and, and in being unbound, it means that we must be restored. That those things that have bound us up. You know how, how easy it is for a spouse to bind up another spouse? You know exactly which button to press to bind them? You, you know what I'm talking about? A friend, a parent, a child knows exactly which button to press to bind the other one. Unbind them. Unbind. Let them go free. At the very core of our text, what we are working with in the human level is, is, is a range of emotions that are huge and deep. In the divine level, what we're working with is a demonstration of God's incredible love for his people, you and me. And, and a demonstration that death will not have the final say. That death has no more power. Where is your power, O oh death? Where is your destruction? Because Jesus Christ has been raised from the dead. As, as we are on this Sunday that looks towards Passion Sunday, where, where we will contemplate the mystery of the passion of Jesus Christ, we, we are looking at the passion not as the first Jews and, and disciples did walking with time. We are looking at the passion with a perspective of the resurrection, knowing the, who Jesus Christ is. And as we look at COVID-19, we are looking at it, not as many other people are. We are looking at it from the perspective of who Jesus Christ is. He is the one who, when we roll the stone back, can call us forth from our death. And when we roll the stone back and calls us forth, can give the orders to unbind. And the unbinding is, is, is the restoring the restoring of the person to right relationship within the community. There is a death worse than what COVID-19 is promising and threatening. And that death is the death we have been living over the last 30 years in our nation. We're not seeing that death. That death, which was a death of our families, a destruction of integri integrity, a, a destruction of decency, a destruction of fair play, a destruction of living by values and virtues and character and principles, a destruction of, of, of trusting people that they will do the right thing because it is right, a destruction on, on the level of the family with parents and children, where, where children have stopped obeying parents and parents feeling powerless in the face of their children. A destruction of our education system where so many children come out of the education system unfit for civilization and unfit to be citizens of this great country. And they, they come out with, with, with little sense of, of what it requires as a citizen and, and the responsibility that is ingrained in us because we are citizens of this country. There's a death we have been living as we've seen our murder rate rising constantly. There's a death we have been living as the quality of our life has been diminishing significantly over the last 30 years. There's a death that we have been living in this country that is more destructive and more pernicious than COVID-19. And Jesus is saying to that death, that that death will not end in death, but in the glory of God being revealed. And he's saying to us, come forth from the grave. When we all see the end of COVID-19, whenever that is, and, and, and I'm just perturbed by the lines, I must wait a little longer so that the glory of God may be revealed. I'm perturbed by those lines. But whenever that, that end comes, we will see the glory of God. But for that, we have to move the stone. That means in your families, you have to move that stone that has stopped that communication between you. You have to do the forgiveness work. Do it. Don't wait. Do the forgiveness work. Stop. You're in the same place. You're going to be in the same house. You're going to be real small unless the forgiveness work is done. That's moving the stone. Do the forgiveness work. Look in the eyes of your family one by one and say that you're sorry, that you didn't understand, you, you didn't realize. Whatever it is. But, but, but ask for forgiveness. And, and let us allow this two weeks be a time of moving the stone 
starting that forgiveness work and allowing Jesus to call us forth from the tomb so that we can be unbinding each other. So that at the end of this period, rather than death and destruction breaking out, life, joy, and resurrection will break forth into our land. I know many people are itching on these two weeks. Panic. Cabin fever before it even starts. This will not end in death. But for it, for it to end in life, we have to be engaged and allow Jesus to lead us. Open that grave. Open it. That wound that has caused such destruction in your family, open it. And if the person is not living with you, call them. FaceTime them. WhatsApp them. Engage in forgiveness work in these two weeks. Engage in forgiveness work because God will bring life where there seems to be death. Do not wait. And in that, the unbinding will take place. And the renewal and rebuilding of our society will take place. And you and I will see the glory of God manifest before us. And we will know who God is. Amen. Let us stand and profess our faith in this incredible God of life who has called us into being. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We come before God knowing that God hears the cries of his people's heart. We pray that this sickness that has come over the world will not end in death but in God's glory and through it the Son of God will be glorified Lord hear us Lord graciously hear us we pray for all those who have contracted this dreadful disease that Lord they will be healed in your name Lord hear us Lord, Lord graciously hear us we pray for those who have died and their families that Almighty God will raise them up, those who have died, and their families will be comforted. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all the health workers, the doctors, nurses, attendants, and all those who work in places of healing, that Almighty God will protect them and give them healing hands to take care of your broken body. Lord, Hear us. Lord, Lord, graciously hear us. At this time of reflection, let us open the graves of our own lives so that Jesus may raise us from the dead, so that our lives may be restored and in turn restore other people's lives, especially those close to us. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray today as the nation gets together to pray that you will hear our prayers, Almighty God, that you will change lives and restore all of us. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. We bring our prayer to the Father, through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. 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 And remember the Mass is being offered for your intentions. Many of you who have brought your, sent your intentions in, we pray for you today. And the many who are suffering with COVID-19, and especially the two who have died already.
sacrifice and mine may be pleasing and acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teaching of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as a true man, he wept for Lazarus, his friend. And as Eternal God, you raised him from the tomb. Just as taking pity on the human race, he leads us by sacred mysteries to new life. And through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. In the name of the Lord, Hosanna, Hosanna, in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the Jew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. At the time that he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection we offer you Lord the bread of life and the chalice of salvation 
giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, that we may be gathered into one by your Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face and have mercy on us all, we pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who please you throughout the ages, we may merit to be queers to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our oh, Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, Lord, look on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, take, take away, away the sins, sins of the world. world. Have mercy, mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord, I am I not worthy that you should enter under, under my roof, but only, only say, say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
I invite you now to make a spiritual communion. God is here with us. He is a resurrection and a life. With him, there is no death. There is no destruction. And everything that looks like sickness and death, if we allow him, will end in life and joy and hope. There's a death beyond the death of this mortal body. And that is the death of fear, the death of sin, the death of hatred, of unforgiveness, the death of lust and greed, of corruption, and the death of living to please ourselves and not having him as our God. That, that is the death that we must fear. And he's saying, roll open the tomb. Roll it open. Roll it open that he may call us forth from our graves and that we can become the people that he called us to be in our baptism. Because it is in baptism that he rolled the graves open. It is in baptism that we became the children of God. It is in baptism that we were rescued from death to life. And today, in this spiritual communion, he invites you to life because he is the bread of life. Open your heart wide. Open your heart wide. And allow Jesus to enter in. We believe in Jesus in the blessed sacrament. We believe that he's the resurrection and the life. We believe that if we cannot receive him physically, that we can receive him spiritually. We believe that in receiving him spiritually, he comes into our heart, into our soul, and brings us from death to life. Open the graves. Open that hurt that you have nursed for so long. Open it. Open it wide to him. Let him call you forth. Then. Receive Jesus Christ. Receive Jesus Christ. Receive Jesus Christ spiritually into your heart today. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. 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 This week, I want you to do something. Don't pray for you, and don't pray for your list. Pray for someone else outside of your list. Pray for them, that, that they may encounter Jesus as resurrection and life. Let's, let's move our prayer attention from us now, and let's move our prayer attention to others. Pray for people who are lonely, who are sick. Pray for people who are suffering right now in the hospital in, in Kuva or, or in Balandra. Pray for people and their families of who have, have died. Let's, let's move our attention from us now. Let's move it to other people. And in moving it to other people, let us recognize that, 
that God will use us as a, as a channel of grace for other people. So that we, we start interceding now for those who have no one to intercede for them. Let us also this week make sure and call that person that might be living alone. Let's call the neighbor. Before the curfew ends, midnight tonight, make sure you have the numbers of those around you. So you can just check in with them and make sure everybody's doing okay. And, and, and let us, in these two weeks that we will have, let us really connect deeper with people than we have before. Remember his invitation to us, just open the grave. Just, just roll that stone away. Well, well, let's roll the stone of selfishness away now. Let's call, let him call us out of the grave of selfishness. That, that we learn to give to each other something that is wonderful. You know, you know you, 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 I know many of you are partaking in Mass, but, but no, no collection. We have announcements. Just pray and ask God what he wants you to give. And, and, and just keep putting it aside. And when that time comes, we will know what to do. And I'll give you instructions later. Amen. 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 The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. Almighty God bless you. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. With a mighty hand, with an outstretched arm, he led them and set them free. With a mighty hand, with an outstretched arm, he died on Calvary. With a mighty hand, with an outstretched arm, he leads us forth into his kingdom, the new Jerusalem.